For more than a century, polo players from around the globe have tried to write their names on this cup, yet only a few have had the honor. Their names are embossed in silver for eternity and uphold the enduring heritage of polo for generations to come. It doesn't get any better than this, the most prestigious trophy in all of North American polo on the line today. It's that time of year again where dynasties rise and fall and legends are made. Nine teams will battle for the most prestigious trophy in all of American polo. Some will look to continue their legacy and others will try to create one. Watch as these modern day gladiators fight to carve out their place in history. Welcome to the 2024 US Open Polo Championship. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the USPA Polo Network. We are here for the 2024 US Open Polo Championship. We're on field number two at the National Polo Center. And today, we have Clearwater taking on Park Place. I'm Toby Wayman, joined with me as always, Cody Off. And here we go, Cody. Thank you, Toby and Park Place. They can secure a spot in the semifinals with a win today. They're 2-0 last time out. They played a week ago against Tamara, where they won 12-8. Juan Brito scored two goals in that game on 50% field goal shooting. But more importantly, Toby, he provided assists on three Hilario Ujoa goals. The two of them were lights out. They take 16 shot attempts per game. That's only fourth most in the gauntlet, but they have the second best penalty percentage in the gauntlet at 82%. And the team is second in assists per game with 3.7%. So looking good coming into this game against Clearwater, who have had a rough start to their U.S. Open campaign. Park Place, yeah, they really have some very interesting and uh, uh, intriguing stats there for sure. Clearwater, they lost their last game to Coca-Cola 10-9. to They were down 7-0, though, at halftime, uh, and they came back and, um, and outscored Coca-Cola 9-3. to In the second half, Jared Zinni scored four goals. He had uh, three of those in the sixth chucker. Um, today he's, he's having to sit, um, for a black card, uh, which is accumulation of yellow cards. That means that, uh, Geronimo Obergon is coming in for him, for him today. Um, they had a kind of a tough start to the U S open, um, and being shut out at halftime versus Coca-Cola Clearwater, they, they came out firing and nearly pulled off the comeback. I mean, they were, I mean, they were right there. Um, it would came down to the wire before him, but anyway, uh, they assisted on four goals in that game. Nearly two more than their average. The, some of their key stats here, they took 22 shots versus Coca-Cola, seven more than their gauntlet average. And so that brings us here to the teams. Let's check out our rosters real fast, starting off with Clearwater. Playing number one is Lucas Criado Jr. Playing number two, Gringo, the Professor Colombres, Geronimo, Churi, Obergon in the number three position, and then Chip Campbell playing number four today. And then for Park Place, in the number one position, Andre Boradin coming in the number one position. Number two, Juan Obritos. Number three, Alario Ujoa and Marcos Bignoli Jr. playing the number four position. Our two mounted officials today are going to be Jamie uh, Mercatani and Gaston Lucero. Steve Dalton is our third man. And uh, let's check out this feature we've got together here on Alario Ujoa, Cody. Some pretty interesting stuff we've seen out of him so far this well, I year. Told you, yeah, I told you about Juan Britos in their game against Samara because we didn't want to bury the lead here. Hilario, 10 goals on the day on 67% shooting. He won seven throw-ins on his own as well. And hey, we heard right out of his own mouth how important these throw-ins are. Mm -hmm. Dujoa retook the gauntlet total in goals, leading the way now. He's up to 72 on the season. 
also back at the top of goals per game, scoring 7.2 in that regard. So a very realistic shot for Hilario to hit that 100 goal mark yet again this gauntlet season as we continue to look at some of his incredible goals against Tamara the other day. Well, actually, last week, one Mm -hmm. week ago. So a little bit of time off here for Park Plays, but I think they're going to come out flying, Toby. You know, I always thought thought it's hard to go that long uh, between games, tournament games. You know, you can practice your horses all you want. You can stick and ball them. You can blow them out, put air in their lungs, all that. It's just it's hard to maintain uh, your horses to get them to peak, for lack of a better way to put it, at the right time when you've got that much time between games. But if there's an organization that can do it, it's this one right here. This is uh, Lavinia Rupe here that we've got uh, Alario on. He started. Uh, this is one of the mares that won Best Playing Pony in these week uh, in every game of the U.S. Open. They've been picking Best Playing Ponies, and this is one of our Best Playing Pony spotlight horses right here. Beautiful mare. And then we've got a uh, Venti Cinco. Intriga for Andre Bordin. And Britos, I know, is on Malenka right here. Open Malenka. Here comes Ujoa. He's going to win this first throw into the game, just like we were talking about with him last Sunday. And I want to go ahead and confirm right now, uh, I spoke with Polito Pires earlier today, and he is 100% committed. He's going to be our guest for this Sunday's 3 p.m. or 4 p.m., I should say, feature game of the week, which is really cool, especially after Ujoa was talking so but saying such as nice things about him in the, on Sunday. So now we're going to get to have the benefit of his knowledge for our feature game of the week this week. So be looking forward to that. Here comes Ujoa, comes in, takes the ball away from Campbell, tries to get back to it, loses sight of the ball, coming in, picked up now by the Professor. Colombres reaches down, oh, keeps it away, now leaves that ball right here, and it's going to be picked up now by Criado. He sends it down the left-hand side. Lucas, his shot. Going to be turned back by Britos. Wano coming in now. Andre Bordin is going to jump on it. Andre doesn't connect with the shot, and it's now picked up here by Bignoli. Marcos Bignoli checking down now. Marcos drops it back to Britos. Takes off running right here as Bordin comes in to lay a pick for him. Churi comes in and puts some pressure on Wano, and here comes the pass to Ujoa, who slips in here, picks it up on the left-hand side. Back to the inside now of Lukitas right here. Criado. And Ujoa takes off with it. Ujoa still with control of that ball. Working it down. Comes back around. Where's he going to go? Left or right? Looks like he's going to go to the right. There. Now Britos comes in to lay the pick for him. Giving Ujoa some space and time to work this one back around. Yeah. Criado here on Loxera. That's another one. We've got a horse feature on. We'll see uh, him talk about this mare after the break. Here's Britos, wins the ride-off, hits a little back shot there, flip style. Oh, look at that horse get around for Ujoa. What a play. What a horse. Nicely done. Now, Bignoli seals it back here, too. Takes it back in. He put it there. You won't see a whistle there, but you're going to see one here. Well, Hilario Lavinia Arupe, so quick, but I Oof. think he may have fouled in the process here. That we... first time he got around was beautiful. Let's take a look quickly here at the foul. They're going to take the penalty five quickly here, it looks like. Perhaps some Park Place players changing horses. Mm-hmm. Ritos just got back into the frame. Criano off to the right-hand side here, looking to set up. Gringo, the professor, sends it on down. Raul Colombres Jr., his shot down here for Campbell. Chip jumps on it. Kippa. Chip, a native of Point Clear, Alabama, coming back from at the goal. Look at Chip. Good job. Oh, tough break there for Campbell. And Gringo can't get to it. Here comes Britos. Picks up the ball, takes it forward there. Gringo with the snake. Look at that. What a play. Columbres stolen right back by Alario. And then, well done. Over going. What a play there by Churi. Picked out of the air by Wano. And now, Ujoa will jump back on it. Flips that one forward. Looking for Britos or for Bignoli. He's going to go left right here to Britos. There it is. Lots of angle over there for Britos to pick up, and Ujoa will hold the man as Britos will take it back to the inside. Then takes off running to the right-hand side as Ujoa breaks down the left-hand side. Uh Uh-oh. Let's it get away from here. Gringo looking for the whistle. Doesn't find it. Britos getting caught right here, fighting off Gringo. Keeps that ball from touching the boards, then comes back to it, waiting for Ujoa to come in and help him out. Now he'll go ahead and lay the pick and let Britos get out of there with that ball. Wano back to the left, then hits it to Ujoa, who waits for it to catch up to him on his offside, near side, then offside. Takes it back to the inside for 
Big Nolly, who leaves the ball there for Ujoa once again. He'll drop it back to Britos. Wano going to go ahead and send a bomb downfield. Not yet. He takes it back to the left, straightens his mallet on his leg, bends it back into place, back to the inside right here, and then gives it back to Ujoa. Love those drop passes. Now Ujoa back around to the inside. Man, that horse got around. Burning up a lot of time here trying to find a hole to get to the goal. And Gringo's going to get caught right here. Well, I bet we're going to have a wholesale change. We do have a highlight clip of Hilario on Lavinia Arupe, who might have time to see it here before the penalty shot as Hilario goes to change horses. Take a look. This was from the best playing pony game earlier in the season, well, a week ago, against Tamara. And watch this goal, Toby. Just absolutely flying past and... What I was hoping he was going to do <laughs> was get on one of these kind of runs. Here in this first chucker. But again, we will likely see Lavinia Rupe come back in this game, depending on if he needs her later on. See the Park Place players. They have quite lengthy lists of horses. Man, they are today. deep. Yeah, very deep. Juan Obritos has nine spares listed. 14 horses at the field. And they do such a good job, obviously. They might not use all of them, Toby, but they're there if they need them. The penalty two put on through there by Hilario. All right. Penalty two. Ujoa, first goal of the game. Back to the center. And this is going to give Clearwater the offensive side of the throw-in. Let's see. Watch Chip up there in that number one position. He's going to come out of this play with the ball right here. Well done, Chip. Campbell wins the throw in. And Hilario just jumped on to Mega Big Bay. Oh, yeah. There's Big Bay coming in now. And one of our favorites right here. Now, Ujoa reaches out, makes the hook. Now it's left there for Colombres, who fires the ball forward. Like, looking for Campbell. Look at this. Well done right here. Bignoli takes his man. Wano trying to get to Chip. Chip fires at the goal, and he got it. Well done, Chip Campbell. Puts a tie on the board here. One to one. Chugger number one. Set of aces now. Beautiful power polo play made by Clearwater. Great answer as well. Chip Campbell. Remember, he's coming off the injured list. Him and Gringo Columbres both That's out right. of the lineup yeah. in their last game. So not only dealing with a tough schedule, they've had some injury problems, different lineups. Again, too, remember that last game. It was 7 nothing Coke at halftime. We urged you not to turned the game off and i hope you didn't because they came roaring back and again i mean jared zenny was clearwater's mvp in that game they just ran out of time and now you know of course jared serving a black card suspension today another new lineup just you know tough yeah. us open campaign for this clearwater team but on the positive side they've got nothing to lose and i'm sure they're really hungry for a win absolutely here. they'd love to get one going right now colombres turns it goes ahead tries to break past Juano, holds his mallet well done Juan. And now picked up here by Lucas. Drops it back. Just under two minutes left to go here in the first chucker play as Gringo jumps on the loose ball. Fires it back down the field here looking for an open player. Who's he going to find? He's going to find Obregon, but it's going to be a back shot from Ujoa. Picked up by Wano. Unable to get to it. Another quick back shot, but we do get a whistle on a right away violation going against Britos. Penalty number two coming up in favor of Clearwater with a chance for them to break the tie and take the lead. Absolutely. Tough one here. So bit of a delayed whistle, definitely crossing the line here. I'm just wondering if Brito hadn't have missed that ball, if he would have been quick enough and got away with it. Abu Bakar writes uh, in here. He says, uh, Toby, um, I heard you calling one of the players uh, a professor. The only polo player called professor is Duwale Baba from Kaduna Polo Club in Nigeria. Well, there's one more, and, I call, and I've been calling Pro, uh, Gringo the professor <laughs> for a few years now. I think that's Coquito there. Um, yeah, the professor, because uh, he can definitely, he knows how to give school lessons, uh, you know, and so it's, uh, it's one that he earned a long time ago. Don't think he went to teacher's college, but he's a professor. <laughs> uh, he's a professor of polo. A professor of polo, exactly right. Good call, Cody. And then uh Gutierrez watching from Wichita, Kansas. Salute to Goal. Good to see you, too. Thanks so much for tuning in. Yeah, remember to engage with us here on Facebook or hop onto Twitter or X. Use the hashtag USPA Live. Again, let us know where you're watching from, who you're cheering for, and Toby and I will do our best to answer questions and get to those comments as best we can. Good start here. Like you were saying, Park Place. 
for most of this chucker here, they've had possession of the ball, but haven't really been able to get on the attack. Mm -hmm. A good chucker here for Clearwater, kind of figuring out Park Place, playing good defense, and then getting a couple goals quickly back to back. Field number two seems like it's playing very well today. It's a very fast field. Okay, coming back around right now, it's going to be Ujoa. Oh, Gringo stumbled a little bit there, but, Gringo, but uh, Ujoa keeps control of the ball. Colombres goes ahead, breaks back to the left first, gets Gringo to take the bait, then he'll go back. He'll come back to the left again after starting back to the right. Now hits a next shot over here to Britos. Britos will hold the ball as Ujoa goes up for the pass, and Britos will hit it one time back to Ujoa for a give and go. Alario comes back. Ujoa gets past midfield right here with Churi all over him. Over going, goes in. Oh, well done. Shuri got his horse to jump there. Now slaps a tail shot, knocked down by Ujoa. Shuri back on it, takes it forward right here. Columbus had come in to try to help out, but Shuri's got the ball. Geronimo over going, otherwise known as Shuri. Oh, gave it right back to Ujoa right there, and then sends it forward here where it's going to be Andre Boradin looking to pick up the play. Andre took a swing at the ball, doesn't connect. Next one, too, it's going to be Marcos Bignoli. Marcos Bignoli all the way down. Here comes Andre. And whoa, what a goal. Well done. Was that? That was Andre. I, I Andre believe he took swung the hook through the hook. And got a piece of the ball. What a play. We got to watch this one again. This is a cool goal right here. And what a way to end the chucker as well for Andre. Pass up from Bignoli. Watch this. He's going to get hooked here by Obergon. Does Bignoli get a piece of that? Or I think Andre swung right through I it. I think he did too. What a goal, Andre. Beautifully done. But I think Ujoa was riding in there to try to lay a hook on Churi to keep him from hooking from Bardeen. <laughs> Very awesome. All right, we'll be right back here on the USPA Polo Network. Laxara like is um, nine years old. Uh, she's out of Corazon and Machitos Parker. Corazon is a, a gray mare that was from Ricardo Portugal. My dad used to play in the Open, that she was really good. And, bueno, like Sarah, I think she's following her steps. I played her uh, two years ago in Argentina, the Camara, and she was my best mare. So I said I had to bring her to the States to play here. And I brought her last year to play with the Valiente 22. And I think it took her a while to, to get used to the to the place here. And I think now she's starting to, to do better and better. And she's she's my top man for sure. Uh, I start on her because I feel comfortable on her. I know that she'll get me in the game fast. And I'm going also to play her a bunch of times. Zinni with a back shot right there. And Antonio, look at that. What a horse right here by Criado, Criado in the red zone, no way, what a goal. Antonio, look at that, what a horse right here by Criado, Criado in the red Her heart, she goes like, she can go really fast. And whenever she starts to feel tired, she gives you, she gives you another gear. When all of the horses are tired, I think she, she's tired also, but she's still going faster than the rest. I mean, she's unbelievable. Welcome back, everyone, to the USPA Polo Network. Getting ready to start Shucker number two here. We've got a tie ball game on the board. Two to two. Shucker number two. Set of deuces on the board. And let's see. Let's, let's check out our standings here. Yeah, Toby, again, with a win today, Park Place would join Valiente at 3-0 and and secure their place in the semifinals. And... Park Place, you know, they want to win today. Their last game is going to be against Ledolfina, so a tough matchup. That's going to be our feature game of the week, actually. So they would love to get their foot into the semifinals today before they face Ledolfina. And for Clearwater, again, you could see them at the bottom of the standings. 0-3, they don't have a possibility of making it to the semifinals. But we know they're hungry for a win in the U.S. Open. And again, that nothing to lose mentality, Toby, can sometimes Ooh. benefit a team like Clearwater well, yeah, against a powerhouse definitely. like Park Place. Make them a deadly opponent, that's for sure. Well done. Back shot here. First one, too. It's going to be Big Noli looking for the whistle. Doesn't find it. There's Chip Campbell to come up with a play. Chip Campbell gets to the boards, then drags the ball back around. Doesn't connect. Ujoa tries to get there, but it's going to be the professor to come in behind him. Gringo winds up, sends this one forward, looking for... A pass down here coming in. It's going to be taken now here by Lucas. This is a Centuria. This is a Venticinco horse that he has. It's us just over the back line wide. Centuria is the name of this horse that he's on. 
you can see. Trying to figure out who the 25 uh, 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 prefix is. I'm not familiar. Are you? No? Hilario Ujoa here, I can tell you, is on Senora Queen. We saw Juan Obritos on Latia oh, Cyrenaica. Yeah. Here we go. Here comes a coast to coast run from Ujoa. Well, thought about it. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and drop the hammer here, make his run. Here comes Bignoli to, pa to pick up the pass. Marcos. Bignoli checks down now. Sends it to the center where Ujo is coming in hot. He's going to go ahead and blow the doors off of everybody right here. Chip, though, got to him. Well done, Andre. Then it's Ujo to back up Bordeen. Coming in, Campbell tries to flip it forward there. Back shot here from Ujoa at the goal. Oh, nicely done there. Churi with the back shot on Annabella. That's a really nice horse of of, uh, of of Jared's that he always likes to play in the first, second chucker and come back on the fifth and sixth. Shot from Bull, uh, from Bull one, and it's over the back line wide. Yeah, I think Jared, I think, I think Jared, or excuse me, I think Geronimo's on all of Jared's yep. Chinese horses. And, and I think today. Jared also says he's given one to Criado today, too. Oh, awesome. And just going back to that last play, when Bignoli hit the pass forward to Ushoa, he was calling for that pass. He was like 20, 30 yards behind Bignoli, just going full speed. Oh, yeah, of somehow course. got to that's it. His, it that's incredible. his game. You'll see when he gives a pass to, to Juan Britos, Britos basically is just waiting for Ujoa to run past him, so he hits it one time right back up to him wherever. He's just waiting for Ujoa to pick direction that he's going to go, and then he delivers that ball. Here comes the pickup now by Criado. Luquitas, there you go. I'm going to drop it back to Gringo. Takes the man and lets Gringo move off with the ball. That forces Ujoa to come back into the game and put some pressure on Gringo, who then releases the ball back up here for Obergon. Sure, he's got to step on his man. Out in front, reaches out, looking good, going to the goal. Marco's trying to catch him. I don't think he can be caught right here. Churi in the red zone. Goes to the tennis serve. Out of the air. Over gone. Oh, no. He was snake bit going to goal yesterday in the 16-goal finals of the Outback Cup. From the field, scored all of his goals from the penalty line, but then actually finally ended up picking up one or two in the last chucker there from the field. But, yeah, he shot a bunch of times, and it looks like that bad luck is following him here, at least for the first couple chuckers. Well, that's too bad that – been hard pressed to get a better goal of the that game if awesome. he was able to score that. And Bignoli there, he was he's riding Lavinia Alianza, not a slow horse by any means. Coming in, it's going to be Brito Suano. Great knock in here, not too much angle, not too much distance. He's able to release the ball back down the field where Ujoa is there to come in. It gets knocked down though, picked up by Brito, and now here comes Andre Boradin. He's already scored once today. Look at this shot from Boradin. He's looking good. Going in now, coming in. It's going to be taken right here by, oh, well done, Ujoa. Jumping back on that ball right here is going to be Britos. And we get a whistle. Heads up play, but he may have crossed hooked here. Let's take a look if it's an illegal hook. They're calling riding in from behind. Uh, he might have caught, got ridden under the swing a little bit there. Mm. See what Britos was trying to do, getting turned back on this line. Yeah, exactly. Bit of a tough play there. Ujoa wanted to come in on the near side. Uh, right. Th yeah, he kind of hooks Criado in the it's body. That second, Criado waits long enough to to let Britos finally eventually drift underneath his swing. So it's a really heads up play by by Lucas Criado there. Um, you know, I forgot to say this. Uh, that's they're not going to like that. That's gonna be <laughs> never going <laughs> to get away with it, Gringo. Nice try though. Uh, Francisco Lanuse, you know, he's a he's a great player in his own right. Uh, but he works for the Park Place organization, and he's a pilot now for them, and he basically plays and, and just he continues to move horses, brings up the younger ones too, and, and, uh, and, then, and then you know keeps these horses fit and in the rotation. So he told me he's got 20 head right now that are his, and he said he, had, he felt like he had kind of a, almost a day off because he only had to play like 16 of them <laughs> on Sunday. But um, I saw him out here before the Sunday 3 o'clock game when Ujoa was on his way to meet us here. And he told me, he said, Ujoa has been stick and balling and riding almost every single day. He said he's more than he's seen him do in, the, in, in a long time in the past few years. And he said, seems like Ujoa is really having a good time this year playing and really working hard at it. And it's showing like this. Look at this, riding hard right now after taking this play. He takes off running. He's going to hit a pass up here to Britos. Britos, what a play. Britos is not going to miss. He's in the zone right now. Britos, Britos runs it on through. What a goal. Breaks the tie, takes the lead, makes the score. Three to two. Here in chucker number two. A quick change for Britos. I believe he'll That's a get... long jump. <laughs> Very long jump there from Britos. I believe Hilario will pick up the assist here. This is what they do so well. 
look at that little half shot to kind of scoop past some serious forearm strength there from Ujoa. Using the momentum of the horse, too, right there, and really hard heads. When the ball pops off the mallet like that, you know those heads have been cured properly on the mallets, and they're just, they're like concrete. They just, the ball just zings right off of them. All right, Britos, little chip back shot here to Ujoa, who takes off running right now once again. Looking to open up the floodgates here. He's going to try to use horsepower to get away from Churi, but Churi makes the perfect ride off there. Wins the play, hits the tail shot back around for Gringo. Taken forward now by Wano. Wano Britos turns the ball back to the inside. Now Britos winds up and fires. Back down. Here comes Obregon. Yeah, they say open and then a tail shot at the same he's like i'm not sitting hitting an open back shot right here in the goal mouth right up and down the field he hits a tail shot there With picked Ujoa up breathing down his neck exactly well. yeah plus that, that made it so easy for somebody to come down the middle and pick up that right away what a play britos gives it right back to ujoa right here looking for a place to go trying to find a hole to get to the goal now criado keeps it in there and somebody's going to be wrong and we're going to let the umpire sort out who it is thank you roger what a nice compliment So I believe we're going to have a right-of-way infraction here going against Clearwater. Keep an eye on Gringo in front. He's going to slip in front of Ujoa here. And then as Criado comes back to make a play before Gringo clears out and gives Ujoa one more play on the ball. So penalty two upcoming here for Park Place. Okay. Britos will tee it up, and I imagine Ujoa will take it. Second two of the game for Park Place. Third two of the day. Ah, thank you very much. Lucas Sr., Lucas Criado Sr. says that Vinticinco is the breed from Fernando Monteverde and uh, Timmy Wellington. Oh, awesome. And I believe that was also that Luquita's just I just jumped off the horse from Jared Zenny as well. Okay. Back now. Centurion. No. Okay. Here we go. Ujoa going to win this throw in right here. There he goes. Ujoa takes off with it, pops it out there, looking for Wano. He's covered up and makes the hook, and then Britos jumps back on the right away and fires it one time back up to Ujoa, who's already got a step on his man because the professor was looking back at the ball, and Ujoa is going to make him pay for this play right here by running it straight on through. What a goal, Alario Ujoa, and they are firing on all cylinders now with a three-goal lead, 5-2 the score. Three more goals, three quick goals, I should say, to get up to 75 total, 25 shy of the 100 goal mark. We'll be keeping our eye on Hilario for the rest of the U.S. Open, as always, as he gets another good pass there from Juan Obritos. Puts it in. Now it's going to be traded when the throw and gets it uh, challenged there by Bignoli. Bignoli goes back to it on the near side, takes off with it. 30 seconds remain here, and Chucker number two as Ujoa comes in to challenge. Uh oh. And now Ujoa bounces that one off of Gringo's horse's hoof and bounces the other way. Back shot here from U from Wano coming in. Ujoa is there to put pressure on Gringo, who feels Ujoa coming in, knows if he turns it, Ujoa is there to pick his pocket. So he hits the back shot, picked up now by Marcos. Well done, Gringo. Right there, there's a good lesson. And another lesson right there from the Professor. Gives a pass over here to Luquitos. Oof. Now, I think he's going to be fine right there. Now, picked up here by Vignoli and the whistle. Or the horn will sound, and that will end the chucker right there. I think that was a great non-call. Absolutely. Right there with... I uh, think Britos is one of the best players in the world at straightening out and getting those near-side back shots I Just a like very clean, up-and-down player. All right, 5-2 the score. We'll be back after this quick break here on the USPA Polo Network. Historically, the biggest threat to polo fields has been urban development. And once a field is gone, it's gone forever. That's one of the reasons the USPA purchased the National Polo Center. Doing so gives polo a place to call home here in the United States. For centuries to come, generations of polo players and fans will enjoy the National Polo Center. And that's something we are proud to give back to the sport.
Welcome back, everyone, to the USPA Pool Network. Getting ready to start chucker number three, last chucker of the first half of the one and only game of the day here in the US Open Polo Championship. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at our upcoming schedule for the D1 Intercollegiate Championship. We have games coming up throughout the week, and we will be live streaming the semis and, and the final finals correct. Yep. of both. So there are games today being played. So best of luck to all the teams. I think it's UVA taking on Texas A&M and then SMU taking on Grossmont College today in quarterfinal action of the D1, D1 Men's National Intercollegiate Championship. And we're going to be having our, uh, our collegiate team commentate those games for you. That's going to be Liam Lott and Cindy Halley will be uh, calling those games for you. So if you want to tune in and check them out, they start on Thursday. Uh, let's see. We've got um, Michelle coming out here, Maria. Yeah. yeah and, sorry, Toby. No, yeah. And then actually, I wanted to say this horse that Andre's on here, this is a, a horse from Pite Merlos. This is Jeep. Pite Jeep. That's yep. a great name. Right. And there's Britos on Alberta. Rosemary, another really good horse for yeah. Britos. And then, uh, here we go. Coming back around now. If I'm not mistaken, let's see. Where is he? Let me see if I can spot it here. All right, Lucas Criado Jr. right now. Yep, that's on the horse he got from Gringo. This is Roxy. This is one of Gringo's horses here. Now, look at this. He's going to get back around, and it's going to be a tail shot there. And Gringo will be able to collect the play and come back to it here. Actually, that was a really smart play there by Lucas Criado Jr. to force that, that uh, tail shot there. Because then he knew that uh, Gringo was there to be able to get to it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, uh, just a second here. We'll, we'll get the game back underway in just a moment. Bignoli, who just walked out of the frame there, he's on Lavinia Sargento, another Lavinia horse. Oh, you know what? Is Maybe it? we should cut to a commercial here. I think yeah, we're going to have right, yeah. time out, Toby. Yeah, we'll be right back after this quick break here, folks. Stay with us. Newbridge is a very unique club. It's not only a polo club, but it's a residential community as well. It's a nice mix of friendly, but also elegant. You know, and the biggest thing is it's close to town. Uh, it's a gated community, a place that has room to play. It's got room to ride and room to live. The concept of this property is essentially to emulate what they've got in South America, and particularly in Argentina, as far as country club living, with the focal point being on the sport of polo. Uh, you know, people that live here love it here. Chip Campbell, I'm from uh, Point Clear, Alabama, and Sheridan, Wyoming, and uh, my home club is Point Clear Polo Club. My mother remarried. I had a stepfather at a young age, and uh, he was involved in polo, and that's where I learned how to ride. As Criado sends a pass upfield, Campbell on the receiving end, Chip Campbell with the next shot. That's a beautiful finish. So I bought a piece of property in Point Clear that was a former operated as a racetrack. It was called Clearwater Stables. The land was actually subdivided by a former person and it was named Clearwater. So I adopted the name and kept the farm Clearwater. And then every other farm I've bought here and in Wyoming and so forth, we've named Clearwater. I didn't come back to polo till I was 40 years old. So I had a long hiatus in between 10 and 40. <laughs> in my polo career, uh, it seems like my life, uh, one of my goals in life when I was younger uh, was to be seasonal. I started with polo, polo brought me to the season. So everywhere I have, I carry my horses and I have barns and properties everywhere I go pretty much most of the year. This barn in Wellington was just an add on to uh, my existing polo operation, which is like I said in Point Clear and then in Sheridan, Wyoming. And then here was the natural place. I've been down here several years rented. Uh, it was time to make the investment. That's why I bought this place. 
but I have an investment in a nice barn and place in Sheridan, Wyoming. So we play with the Flying H Polo Club and the Bighorn Polo Club in Sheridan and Bighorn, Wyoming, and been going out there for, I think this will be our 14th year. So uh, we're pretty committed to that place, and obviously I'm invested. So uh, that's where we go during the summer. During the fall, we go back to Point Clear, uh, generally play there in October. We have, uh, it's quite a good month weather-wise and so forth in Point Clear. Uh, we play there, we have uh, a nice club there, nice polo, nice people. And then occasionally we'll organize a, a, a medium goal polo tournament, a uh, two-week tournament or so uh, there. But generally it's six to eight goal polo that we'll play and we play during that month usually use we use some of our younger horses at that time especially if we're planning on coming to florida the following year for the the high goal and so forth so uh we'll put the miles on the horses there chip campbell across the center line now hildebrand coming back to defend on a fast pony campbell trying to get around the outside approach shot to goal Chip Campbell inside the 30 now, straightens out and Campbell, what a run and goal right there. Fantastic goal to first. I started with the gauntlet and obviously when I was chairman of the USPA and uh, along with David Cummings, I was instrumental in forming the gauntlet and that, the competitive cups, the three. So I played the first three years there. Camp played last year. This is our fifth. I'm close to 60, so uh, my, my time is weighing out, but I'm in the process of passing the torch to the children, the kids, uh, Camille and Cam, my kids. Okay, welcome back, everyone, on the USP Polo Network. We just uh, got word. I was able to get a hold of the third man, Steve Dalton. He said that what happened was is the the mare uh, stepped on her shoe, and it kind of twisted off and uh, was still stuck on the horse's hoof, and then she stepped on her cornet band a little bit there, and so they had to they, – they actually got a shoer to come onto the field to actually pull the shoe all the way off so they didn't do damage to the hoof, and that's what, what has been taking uh, the time right now. So it's – either well there might be a few more minutes here then because they might need to take it looks like the guys are riding back to the palanques now so we might be a couple more minutes here but that's that's what's going on so it's not a nothing bad don't want to get anybody alarmed or, or make anybody think that something's really wrong here we just wanted to give everybody a quick update yeah cody yeah absolutely and obviously once they get that shoe pulled they'll get the pony back off the field and with the proper care, but you can see our park place players riding off for a minute here. So as you said, we could be probably a few more minutes for a few more minutes. So, so yeah. So I guess we'll we'll just we'll just jump back to a commercial, and when uh, we're, they're ready to get going, we'll we'll let y'all know. We'll be back. So stay with us. We'll be right back right here on the USP Polo Network. I do feel responsible to give back to the sport to maintain the integrity of the sport. Just because the sport has given me so much, my, it's really given me everything that I have today, that I feel like, you know, I wanna preserve the integrity of the sport. Keep polo at the highest level. I wanna keep Americans playing polo in, in the US and high goal polo. That's why I'm, I'm really pushing, you know, playing with La Lina, it's all American. Representing your country always is, is another responsibility brings another stress to it, another level of importance, and I feel like that's kind of my responsibility now. I really want to help 
push the American kids, the ones that have talent, that have a chance to get past six goals. Being notified that I was going to be in the Hall of Fame, it was kind of a shocker. One of the most accomplished American players in recent history, Jeff Hall has won virtually every major U.S. tournament and reached an eight-goal handicap. You know, usually I guess you don't get inducted, you know, so early. I, I'm the youngest by like five years, other than Sonny Hale. But it was an honor, you know. At the end of the day, I get to enjoy the induction with my family, my kids, all my friends. And but it was a it was a special night for sure. For the time that you're here playing in these high-level tournaments, you have to eat, sleep, and breathe polo. And the teams that do that are usually the teams that win. The USPA and all of its tournaments have been around for a long time. You know, we're play, we play tournaments that are over 100 years old. Breaking off different leagues and other organizations doing other things and not staying within the governing body of the sport, for me, is losing integrity. Keeping the integrity of the sport is like keeping the historical soul of the tournaments for the future to come. Okay, welcome back, everyone. Here we go. Getting ready to continue with this chucker. We got the mayor. Uh, shoes pulled off. The shoe pulled off, I should say, and off the field now. So our players are coming back out to get the game back underway. Let us know. No, I see. We've got people tuning in here from, let's see, I saw earlier from Poland. Very cool. And Kansas, Nigeria. Where else? So, yeah, let me know. Let us know where you're, from where you're tuned in. We'd love to hear from you on the comment section on Facebook. Probably the easiest way to get a hold of us. Or you can use the other platforms and use the hashtag USPA Live, like Cody mentioned earlier. We're going to have a fair play free hit here for Clearwater. And Colombres, the professor, will bring it into play as Juano comes in to put some pressure on him. And now it's going to be uh, Gringo will go ahead and take this one. Gets away from the first man, gets away from the second man. Gringo in the red zone. Gringo shoots, and the professor picks up the point. Very well done right there. We've got a two-goal ball game now. 5-3 the score. Clearwater making their comeback happen right here. First of the day for Columbres. They went scoreless in the second, Fanny actually. Bust past both Britos and Ujoa. Super not easy to do. tap off. Okay, and then let's see. Watch Chip again right here when this throw in. Oh, almost. Now it's going to be Marcos still fighting. Now Ujoa gets out of there with that ball, takes off running right here, and as Gringo reaches out for the hook, but Ujoa's already got that ball turned back around, going back the direction in which his goal moving down towards the north. Uh, flips it back up. Oh. Didn't quite get enough on that one. He's able to keep the ball. Oh, the horse kicks it over the back line, though. A lucky break right here for Clearwater. They'll receive their second knock-in so far of the game. First of this chucker. Okay. Back to the center. Here goes Gringo. Brings the ball into play. He's got Criado breaking first right, then left. He's got, he's got uh, Andre coming to him, so he's going to keep this ball right here until 
He's able to find a place to get away from the man. Oh, well done, Wano. What a play. Now flips it back to his offside. Ujo is right there with him. Trying to get away from the man, and he gets hooked. And the horse kicks it forward. What a lucky play right here for Clearwater. Columbres jumps back on it, takes it with him. Has to keep it going right here. Takes it past Bignoli. Bignoli wins the ride off and leaves the ball for Ujoa. Good job there by Marcos. Back to the inside. Here comes the shot from Ujoa. Back over to Britos. Juan Britos winds up, slaps the next shot. Back towards the center. And it's going to be Gringo to pick up the play. Professor Columbres back to the right. Sends it back down past midfield. And here comes Campbell. Chip takes it forward right here. Chip gets taken out now by Ujoa. Hilario holds the man. And then comes back to the ball on the near side. Continues to go near side right here as Chip is pursuing him. Ujoa goes back to the offside. Flips it past Chip and now keeps it alive here on the near side again. Sends it up there for Bignoli. Marcos avoids the hook from Gringo, forcing Gringo to burn his horse up and try to catch him. Marcos looking good, going to the goal out in front. Remember, this is a super fast field right here. Marcos, on those approach shots, you better make him count. Because if not, look at that. What a goal by Bignoli. Beautifully done right there, just as I was saying. But as fast as this field is, if your approach shot is off just a little bit left or right, it's going to be real easy for it to roll over the back line. But he was puts that perfect approach shot right down the middle and sends it on through. Some nice speed underneath him and a great run and goal there for Bignoli, picking up his first of the day and getting all four Park Place players on the score sheet. I was just thinking the same thing. Okay. Back to the center once again. Ball's put back into play. Let's see. It's going to be picked up here by... Mm, good job, Lucas. Looks like Criado able to draw the foul here against Ujoa. Penalty five from the spot will go in favor of Clearwater. Be able to see this one right here. Lucas comes back around. Back shot straight up and down. That's a good a good illustration there of why you, you want to put angle on those back shots. Even if they're short like that, um, if you hit them straight up and down the field or, or straight back, you know, it's, it's very easy for a, a defending player or a opponent to jump on that right of way, whereas... Even though it didn't go very far, if he could have put a little more angle on it, Ujoa might have been able to get to it safe or, you know, without fouling. Either way, penalty five from the spot for Clearwater. Here comes Gringo. His shot gets picked off by Hilario. Ujoa back over to Bignoli on the right-hand side. Marcos waits. He'll Now he'll leave it for Juan. Well done, Chip. Mm, well done, Chip. All right. Good job there, Chip Campbell. Gets out of there with that ball. Gets taken out by Bignoli. And now it's going to be Ujoa to go ahead and hit a little tail shot here for Juan. Oh, man, they know each other so well. Oh, well done. What a read right here by Lucas Criado. Junior, Junior, Junior. We got a one-goal, two-goal ball game here once again now. Beautifully done there. 6-4 now the score. Two goals for Criado. His first from the field. Heads up play initially by Campbell to win the ball, and then Criado comes in, picks it up, cuts back towards the goal, and finishes it off in style. Okay. That's his second of the day here, first from the field, and it's going to be Criado to win another throw in right here. Takes off with it. Open back shot now to set up his offensive players, but it's going to be picked up by Ujoa. And here comes Alario. Over going with an open back shot right there to Criado. Lucas taps once, then going to find some running room here as he catches a pick from Obergon, who lays a pick on Ojoa just long enough for uh, Criado to get away from him. Now Lucas holds that ball, waits, waits, comes back to it right here, and then Ojoa is not happy about this call. Pierce, they're going to call a right of way violation against Bignoli. Uh, I think it was, I think it was Ujo, wasn't it? Well, does Bignoli get in front when Ujoa comes in? You know, did right Ujoa have oh, I see to what get, you're saying. Yeah. Give him one more play. Maybe you're right. Yeah. Like, you can see why Ujo is not too happy with it. Bignoli just kind of standing his ground. Yeah. 
Penalty two, either way, coming up for Clearwater right here, their second two of the game. Laura Jackson says, watching from Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you for great game calling uh, and great guest host this season. Amazing benefit to learn polo and just enjoy the game. Well, thanks so much, Laura. We really appreciate you tuning in and appreciate that comment. Yeah, very excited for, for Polito this, uh, this Sunday. That's going to be a lot of fun, especially with as good as Ojoa was uh, this past Sunday. I think it's great to be able to get another one of the top players in the world to come in and be our guest. Um, because I, I mean, I know Cody enjoys it as much as I do, as does our producer too. It just we love hearing from these guys. I learn something new every time I, I talk to any of them, and it's just a really, uh, really cool to have them come in here and and sit with us and and get let everybody out there have the benefit of their knowledge too. So here comes the throw in, picked up by Campbell. Look at Chip. Well done, Chip Campbell. Sends it forward again right here. Keeps it away from him. Is going to be Ujoa. Nice play there by Ujoa. Stay true. Gives it to Wano, who gives it right back to Ujoa. Alario winds up, sends it forward here for Andre Boradine. Andre coming in hot, forcing Criado to keep the pressure on Andre. Fires at the goal from the 40-yard line and sends it on through. Well done, Andre. Andre Boradine, two goals in this one already. His I love first Ujo two is goals, using him here. Yeah, first two goals of the gauntlet season, in fact, and coming up big here. He's wide open in front. It's the pass, and Boradine, he's very good at these goal shots. He wastes no time, hits it one time. So this horse that uh, Lucas is, is on right here, this is Apollo. This is a horse that came from Jan Pamela from Wyoming, from uh, from Wayne Garrison's operation. So this is very cool. Here comes Gringo. Oh, what a play there. Gringo keeps it alive, drops it down in front of Ujoa, who jumps on that one, 18 seconds. Whoa, Gringo comes in and just... Frappes Ujoa on that play. Rattled his teeth, and now it's going to be dropped back here for Colombres, who will take the man and leave the ball for Lucas. Lucas looking for a buzzer beater right here. Lucas winds up. He fires at the goal. Will it go? Wherever that ball stops rolling is where the throw-in will take place, which is going to be very close to the back line, but that won't come until after our halftime break here so we'll be back in five after half here on the USPA Polo Network. In 1982 I bought this property but this property was a swamp, nothing. Everybody told me you are crazy, how are you gonna buy that property? This is so far away. And I start to build the polo field, I start to build the barn, bring friends to enjoy and to play a little bit. One day I say, Luis take care of the project and he decided to put at a club. Hi, this is Luis Escobar. Welcome to Santa Clara Polo Club. Amazing. I keep all my horses here five months out of the year. They take care of all of them and they do a great job. They're great with the horses. It's a really, really tight operation. Everybody works hard and I know the horses and that's always the most important part. You know, you gotta have a good relationship with the horses. The fields of Santa Clara are very good. Alejandro Batro, same family that took care of Palermo. He's helping us out at Santa Clara. I mean, this is probably one of the best fields I've ever played in. It's always dry, the field is good top shape, so it's a pressure to, to hit the ball, and when you miss it, then you're in trouble. I like the environment, it's safe, it's fun, um, but it's still competitive, so. Well, after the games, we love to get together here at Santa Clara. We have a beautiful little spread. We have drinks, we have empanadas, and we just kind of come together with our friends and our family and have a great time. Luis Escobar helps me a lot. He helps me grow as a player. I play with him. He's always playing at the practices. And his two sons, Lucas and Nico. To be honest with you, this is home for us. We're super lucky to be able to play with our, with our granddad. Our, our granddad and our dad all at the same time. Not a lot of people can do that, so yeah. we're extra lucky. At Santa Clara, you can bring your horses or you can bring your boots and helmet. 
by We Have It All. Welcome back, everyone, to the USPA Polo Network. Getting ready to start chucker number four, the second half of the one and only U.S. Open Polo Championship game of the day. Let's check out our first half stats here, Cody. Pretty even contest so far. Park plays slight advantage. Of course, both teams shooting very well from the field. No penalties missed so far. Clearwater with a little edge in the throw-ins. But it's Park plays with the advantage here. Five fouls in the first half. I think that's a little underneath Park places per game average only seven total fouls committed it's been a nice clean wide open game yeah both teams playing well in this one Clearwater great chance to 
come back, win this game, get their first win of the U.S. Open campaign. Juan Gerlanda says he's watching from I-95. That's great. Thanks, Juan, for tuning in. Lily tuned in, too. Thanks so much. Appreciate you guys tuning in and watching the game with us here on the USP Polo Network. I hope somebody else is driving the car. Yes. Well, either way, if he's listening, it's all good. Hilario Ujoa coming out here on Lavinia Macarena to start chucker number Macarena. four. Macarena. Juan Britos is on Latia Mojarita. We'll see Bignoli playing Anaconda Easy Jet, and Andre Borodin is coming out on Machitos Bessie. Easy Jet's a good one there. And then um, Guadalupe here, it looks like, for Churi. Again, on Jared Zenny's horses today, this is another nice one from Jared Zenny. They're all pretty nice, yeah. And then, uh, well, for Lucas, where is Lucas here? I think Let's it was, see who's got it here. Was it the second checker when, when Geronimo had that great run and just missed that? Yeah. Little, little bit. I think that I think was you're An right. that Annabella horse of Jared's. Yep. That's one yep. of his best. And he usually, and, well, he brings her back uh, later on in the game. I'm not sure if he's going to today, but never. Oh, yeah. Okay. There we go. That's uh, another lock horse to lock Mia that we've got uh, Lucas on right here. Lock Mia. Lucas uh, Alberto Criado. Thank you to uh, Mariano Aguirre for sending me a text when we were last, last week when we were like, yeah, that's his initials, you know, it's uh, Lucas. I'm like, Lucas A. Criado and he's, <laughs> he writes back, yeah, it's Lucas Alberto Criado. Okay. Throwing down here in Clearwater Territory. Picked up now by Gringo, wins the throw-in, turns it back to the inside of the defender, looking to get one on the board right here. And he taps it forward right there, and then Gringo gets pushed by the Ujoa, drags it back. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. So a whistle on the play. Somebody's going to be wrong one way or the other. And you can tell the umpires, quiet down, boys, let us discuss. So Gringo is pulling that back. Hilario... I think there was contact, so no, you won't see a delay. I was game. thinking about delay right there. But watch where the line of the ball is after he changes. Are it they here. touching there? Mm. It's still kind of coming. It looks like from our angle, more across. Well, the he field, drug it back. Then he hits know? the next so. shot at the goal into Ujoa. So well, they're talking it over right now. So it could, was originally yeah, it could be a chance that there's hitting into the player or standing in the standing right standing in the right of way. And we, maybe we'll get a better look here. They're reviewing it. So the play is under review right now for he hitting into the horse. he pulls this ball back, does he change the line back towards the goal? Even if he does, I think this, the player still has to he has to give the guy a chance kind to get out of the way. Clear. So as you mentioned, yeah, play is under review. So we will, won't speculate any further. We'll let you guys can make up your minds at home and see if the umpires agree with you. Erica is tuning in from... North Augusta, very cool. So one, two. Yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one, but it does though. It looks like they are going to go ahead and confirm this against Columbres. Penalty five from the spot goes in favor of Park Place. Chucker number four. That's what it looked like to me, Toby, from first glance, but a good job by the umpire crew here to, you know, review that and make sure they get it right. Ujoa brings the ball into play. He's uh, taking a page out of Elizalde's book here, the, the, the trot-in knock-in. Leaves it now for Britos. You know, I was kicking myself because I meant to and forgot to ask Hilario about that, that whole game against <laughs> about the, <laughs> the trotting knock it, in. Yeah, I wanted to ask him what it's like to defend that if it if yeah. it throws him off because you know you're used to everybody bringing it in at a at a canter. But... Here comes Gringo, shot it's off to the right of the goal, and he drops it down in the red zone, inside the red zone, I should say. And now it's going to be picked up here by Lucas. He'll take it away from the goal to ultimately come back to it. Hits an open back shot right there into Britos. Then coming to it, it's going to be a knock in here for Park Place. But then again, there was a bunch of things that crossed my mind that I didn't get to say because oh, we were I know. just smitten here listening to Hilario. For real, man. I'm telling you. I told him before the game, too. I was like, listen, Hilario, the, the less work I do today, 
the better. And oh, not because I don't want to work. No, but just man, we it was great. Hear That's Polaria. what we did. We'd love to hear hear from him. All right, here comes Britos to send this ball back down the give and go, right back down the middle. Ujoa is flying right now, but it's picked off here by Criado. Looks calm as can be, just ice in his veins as he hits the back shot here. Ujoa takes the hit and wins the ride off. What a play, Alario. Well done. Churi takes it away from him. Over a gone. By the way, Churi's got like the cutest little little boy ever. Such a cute little guy with his with his flaming red hair. I mean, something else. Here comes Chip Campbell to the goal. Chip fires at the goal. It's off to the right. Can he get to it one more time, Campbell? And well done, Chip. He's going to pick up a penalty one on this one and bring his team back within one. Seven, six is now the score. And Clearwater will get possession of the ball from center field instead of throw in. Chip Campbell. Here's the approach shot. Keeps pushing that line, and as Boradine comes in to hit the back shot. I think Chip did a great job here because as he's pushing that line, he doesn't he's not appealing for it. So he's kind of doing the he's kind of, you know, enticing Andre to go in there and make that back shot, but never actually gave up the right of way or the play. So a smart, smart play there by Chip. Good job. And now we'll have a penalty five from midfield here to go in favor of clear water. Here comes Colombres. Gringo, the professor, to bring the ball back into play. Winds up, hits it one time, right down the middle, looking for Churi. Coming in is going to be Bordine. He'll get called off by Ujoa, who goes, wow, what a play. Ujoa hits the near side, open back shot there at the last second. Coming in, it's stolen here by Criado. Lucas, and we get a whistle stopping the clock. They're going to call Big Noli on this one, it looks like, for right away. Let's watch it again, though, and see if that is indeed the case. Yeah, crossing right away after the shot. Mm. Yeah, some contact there. You can see the back end of Criado. Good call here for by the officials. Just waiting for the ball placement, it looks like. Yeah, the, the, the case could be made to put this really anywhere. From a goal shot penalty here from a, a four to a three to a two. You know, you got Clearwater player running to the boards. And it was a back shot from Ujoa. So they're going to go with a penalty two. Dangerous riding here against Bignoli. Yellow card awarded on the play too. So Marcos has to be careful for the remainder of the game here, and that's going to accumulate too. I think that's a good call, going away from the goal with the contact there. Penalty three initially, yellow card moves it up to a penalty two. Correct. If that was a if that was a two with the yellow, it would have been the, effectively a penalty one. So yeah, I think you're right. I think I think it's a good appropriate ball placement here. Good call. Yeah, tough break there for Marcos. He came in there, didn't flatten out on the right away enough, and ends up colliding with the back end of, of Criado's horse as he's riding hard to get to that ball. And here comes Lucas Criado Jr. Slows it down to a walk and then sends it on through. And now we have a tie ball game. Look at this. Clearwater comes out swinging here in the second half and pick up two quick goals. Yeah, they had a great third chucker keeping it going here into the fourth. Effectively a two goal swing. You got a penalty one on the uh, on the north on the south end, come back and then pick up a penalty two. So effectively a two goal swing here. And so they go down from being down uh, five seven to now tied up at seven goals apiece in about a minute of polo. Okay. Coming back around. Let's see. It's going to be taken here by Cole Lovers. He's going to sit the hit the next shot back on down, looking to take the win, take the lead right here. Look at this shot from Gringo. Churi gets to it, fires, and sends it on through. And for the first time today, Clearwater is in the lead over Park Place. Wow, what a swing. And just like we've been talking about since the first throw in, Cody, you've said it first, these guys have nothing to lose, and they are dangerous today for Park Place. Yeah, they're playing like it, too. They're all playing very well. Playing like there's no tomorrow. 
We've just seen some good open pull of both ways. Geronimo takes the pass and puts it on through for the score. With that, we have all eight players now with a score, at least one point to their credit. Here comes Gringo fighting with uh, Britos. Then Gringo keeps it away from Ujoa, fires it back down where he's got Criado on a straight breakaway right here, going to the goal. Look at this play. Now, Lucas in the red zone, Criado. Oh, man, it is all clear water here in Chucker number four so far. Wow, what a goal. Somebody missed their man out of the throw-in. We think, talked about that with Hilario Joa on Sunday. I think Gringo just beat two guys, and which kept, gave uh, Lucas a, a chance Lucas to be free. Lucas was wide open in front. Great pass forward. Criado Jr. never going to miss chances like that. Rarely, I Rarely, say. yeah, exactly. Don't jinx the guy, right? <laughs> back to the center we go once, once again, and it's going to be put back into play. Knocked down by Andre Borodin. Takes it forward here. Chip lets him have the first play. Chip comes in, and it's Bignoli to send that one forward on the near side. Looking to keep it away from those defenders. It's going to be taken now by Criado. Sends it over to Obergon. Down the left-hand side. Back shot right here. And then Churi jumps back on it. Churi keeps it alive right here. Keeps it away from Britos, and then keeps it away from Ujoa. Tries to come back to it, but Brito's, or excuse me, Gringo is there to back him up. Gringo going to the goal. Goes to blow the doors off of Big Noli. Look at this. No way. What a goal. Wow. Four straight goals. Five straight goals here. Yes, indeed. And all here in the fourth chucker. Woo. What a chucker here from Clearwater Park Place. They're on their heels at the moment, and Gringo Columbrates Clearwater taking advantage. What a power move and wow, goal by what Gringo. Goal. This is unbelievable. Who'd have thunk it? They, they start this chucker off down 7-5, and now there's still two minutes left to go here in the fourth, and they're up 10-7. Whoa, five straight quick goals like that, and then it's kicked forward right here, and it'll be picked off by Ujo. Oh, what a play there by Churi. Oh, man. Tough break, Churi. What an eye, though. Then I tell you what, that's exactly what Park Place needed. They needed to get the a stop to this bleeding right here, five straight, and then had Cherry not got blown there, you were probably looking at goal number six in a row. Well, everyone loves an underdog story, Tony. Yes, absolutely. Keep in mind, remember, if Park Place win today, they'll be in the semis. If they lose today, they still have Ledal Fina coming mm -hmm. up next. So they would love to get that win today and get themselves into the semis. And who knows? You, yeah, a two and two record might might Could, not get it done at the end. So they want to make sure they get that three third absolutely. win. I should say here in this I one. Agree with you there. Yeah. Clearwater. Well, if they, it's if they go to a two and two record, it's out of their hands. Right. Exactly. You know. So Clearwater would love to play spoiler. I'm sure. Oh yeah. All right. It was Joe up. Penalty five. And we, wow, we still have just under two minutes left to go. Whoa, what was that? Oi. Near side back shot. Now coming in is going to be Lucas Criado. Takes the hit there from Bignoli. What a shot. What a horse. He took that hit and didn't even flinch. Here comes Colombres. Jumps back on it. These guys are playing hard now. Look at this. Gringo coming in hot. He's going to get there. Colombres. No way. What a goal. What is going on here? This is amazing. Clearwater, six straight goals against Park Place. Unbelievable. Cats and dogs living together. <laughs> Insane chucker here for Clearwater. Hilario, I mean. No choice but to pull out. He knew he wasn't going to be able to make a play there on Gringo. Both of them coming in hot. And Gringo Columbres picks up another one. And there's still another minute left to go in this chucker. They've scored six goals, a goal a minute so far in this game, in this chucker right now. Can they make it seven right here? Going to be picked up now by Britos. Then jumped on it there. It's going to be Gringo to keep this ball moving down the field. Gringo Columbus goes to break past the man. Well done. Ujoa with a quick back shot right there. Breaks up the play, but it's picked up here again by Lucas Criado Jr. Luquitos. He's got Britos. Puts him in the pocket. Looking to find the seam. He'll take it back around. He's got 12 seconds to tell the warring horn. Now Britos takes it forward right here as Criado is there to keep the pressure on. There's a quick back shot, and Gringo's going to get to it. He's going to wait and then make the hook on Bignoli. Turn it back to the inside and then break past Ujoa, who got caught running a little bit too wide right there. Gringo fires at the goal. It's off to the right of the goal. This is going to be the first chink in the armor we have seen out of Clearwater here in the fourth chucker. Whoa, look at that. And they keep Park Place completely off the scoreboard in the fourth. What a goal. What a game. What a chucker. We'll be right back after this quick break here on the USPA Polo Network.
We got into Wellington, Florida market because of the number of horses were there. So we decided that we should also sell the hay there. And uh, we met some of the polo people there and um, we've become very friendly with the polo community because the, uh, they require such a, a great quality hay and which is what we want to provide. Welcome back to the USB Polo Network. Getting ready to start chucker number five. 15 minutes left in regulation time. And we got a player feature here. Well, we got an injury timeout right now, which is why we haven't started the chucker yet. Somebody on Park Place asked for an injury timeout. Uh, Andre Bordine. Oh, riding muscle is what, what the information we're getting right now. Oof, that could be painful. Uh, but we do have a player feature, so let's check this out. Well, what a chucker there in the fourth for Clearwater. Criado scored twice, Gringo scored twice, Geronimo and Chip also scored a goal apiece. Take a look here at Criado's work throughout the day. He has four total goals, two from the field, two from the penalty line. And, you know, this was a bit of a backbreaker coming out of this throw-in. Criado wide open, Gringo, what a pass forward. And right now, just all the momentum going in Clearwater's favor. Park plays way back on their heels. And you can't imagine what a positive energy going on in that Park plays end line right now, but they need to do something to regroup and get themselves back in this ball game. We know they can do it very quickly, Toby. They've already held Clearwater scoreless in at least one chucker in this game. Yeah. So 15 minutes to come back here for Park Place. We'll see Hilario Ujoa coming out on Machitos Lula, who's been fantastic this season. Juan Obritos is on El Overo in the Hina. Bignoli is on Chicho Fiesta, and Andre Borodin is coming out on Incari Italia. So got... some very good horses here in the fifth. Candela for Churipan here. You can see, oh, well, we can see him off screen sitting there on Candela. And then uh, if I am not mistaken here, pretty sure... Let's see. I saw him. Let's see. Wait till you can see him again here. Lucas Criado. Well, we I still think have, I saw him uh, out there uh, earlier just a second here on Lock Syrup. But I want to confirm that in a second here. Well, we can see him on our other screens here. 
Haven't seen Andre Mount back up yet. We will let you know if for any reason there's a substitution. Of course, we've seen Josh Escapate play. Yeah, we saw him down there earlier handful, hanging around. handful of games so far this season. And their coach, Nacho Navijo Estrada. Okay. So while we wait for Andre Borodin, we can see this Park Place team here again regrouping, talking strategy with their coach. And again, if anybody can get it done, it's certainly this Park Place team. But we certainly haven't seen really anybody this gauntlet season have their way with Park Place the way Clearwater did there in the fourth chucker. Okay, so... Yeah, we just had There's a. Andre. There he is. Yeah, just uh, just uh, had a third man reach out and tell us just that he said, you know, had an, uh, an injury for for Andre, but uh, he's mounted back up, and here we go, ready to get the game back underway. Who knows? You know, I tell you what, Park Place, they really needed to stop the bleeding there for sure. They've got a knock in now. The first time they've been in control of the ball in the second half is this knock in right here, because the rest of the time it's been all clear water there in the fourth, outscoring opponents. 2010 over their last seven, Chucker. That's pretty cool. Okay, here comes oh, Ritos. Now picked up by Priado. He'll hold the man and take the man. Leave the ball there for Gringo Columbus to come back to it. Gringo sends it back on down for Campbell right here. Chip Campbell coming in. Chip there. Oh, well done. Ujoa breaks up the play. Maybe not. Let's see. We got a, a whistle here. Let's see who's going to be right and wrong. Okay. So we'll see. Okay, looks like we're going to get a penalty number two here. Wait a second. I think they got this backwards. Hold on. Because, oof. As they're blowing a penalty yeah, number two here, it's going to go in favor of Clearwater, not Park Place. Yeah. And Jillian? All right, George Krabby, thanks for tuning in with Kate and Jillian from Aiken. George Krabby, my man George. That's really cool. Love to hear that he's tuned in, watching with us here today with uh, Kate and Jillian. Well, thanks so much for tuning sorry, in, guys. I don't have a good nickname for you, Kate, but we got the Crab Man, George Krabby and Jilly Bean. <laughs> I don't know if Crab and Jelly Beans go well together, but... They do for a watch party. Uh, there you go. Thanks for tuning in. And look at this. Who would have thunk it? This is unbelievable. Criado picks up a penalty two right here. And now, or I should say, Chip picked up the penalty two. and But he puts his team on top by five here in the fifth chucker. Unbelievable. Seriously. Remember Park Place in their first game of the Open. They defeated the Dudacorp, but it was a 7-5 game. They certainly didn't yeah. play up to expectations or the way they wanted to. Let's put it that well, way. I, I, honestly, they look shell-shocked right here to me right now. Oh, Delay of game on Gringo? Ooh, I got to see this one again because I was thinking off-speed bump here, but... Perhaps, yeah. Hilario looked, you know, body language like he knew exactly what we the haven't call been... was right away. I'm just... Let's see from, from here. Watch. Let's watch what we can see here again. Yeah, okay. So... Sure, he gets it out of there. That's clean. That's good. Flips it back over here. Uh, Realistically, he taps it twice and leaves it for Gringo. Right. And then Gringo but taps it. He one, has to, Gringo has to hit or make a move, I think. And they're gonna. Well, could he be? Could the argument be made that by tap when he when he tap, yes. he ran with it right there? I you would know say what I'm the argument could be made, but I don't know. I we we <laughs> I feel like they've been a little bit lax on the on the delay of game recently. And now it's going to be Britos to wind up and power the ball back down towards that goal. It's off to the right. Gringo will escort it over the back line if possible. Yes, and it is possible, and it will happen right there. Okay, so knock in for Clearwater. I, I, and I'm not saying I, – I think delay of game is a good call. I like the rule, and I think it should be called more is what I'm trying to say. So I don't, I don't blame them there. If that is, you know, indeed the case, I think they should be getting back to – to, to blow on those delay of game calls because it does, and in my opinion, it's done a great job speeding the game up. Here comes the shot back down the field, as counterintuitive as it may sound. Coming in now, it's going to be Cherry to pull out at the last second there from riding Britos into the right-of-way. Ujoa, mm, 
Mm, could see that one coming there. That's a tough break. Looks like they're going down in Park Place's favor here. Penalty four pending after the right-of-way violation. They're going to call it against Geronimo, it looks like. See, I was thinking something. I thought they were going to get uh, Chip right here when he goes in for the meet right here. See how Gring, uh, uh, Joe, uh, Joe taps it off to the right? and Yeah. But then, and because I don't think what Churi did there, I guess if he slipped in front, maybe he did slip in front. Either way, it's going to be a penalty number four here. Right away violation. Well, if Chip fa if Chip was fouling and yeah. they had to give Park Place give one, one more play, play that are could you be still allowed to good pick them? Good point. I think that's perhaps that's, what uh, that could be another yeah good good way to look at it. Penalty four here. First four of the game. Ujoa. Not looking good right here. Horse not helping me out. It's going to go wide to the left. Ah. Yeah, tough adjustment to make there Oof. with the horse kind of dancing on him. Still made it pretty close, but close only counts in horseshoes and hand, hand grenades. grenades. Yep, exactly right. And slow dancing. <laughs> Cody, you're going to set me off, dude. <laughs> That's really good, actually. Okay, here it comes. I'm surprised Gringo. Tommy's never told Oh, I've heard it. I've just been a while, and it's funny to hear it come out of your mouth, you know? <laughs> Near side back shot. What a play right here from Bignoli. There we go. This is what we're used to seeing from Park Place. Here comes Ujoa in the red zone. Gets it done right there. First goal they've scored in the second half, and they really, really needed it. Well, from a neutral standpoint, we would like to see beast mode activate here and absolutely watch Hilario bring this park place team back and this might start it off here you know going into halftime they were winning seven to five right so you know it, it's it's very difficult sometimes to come out and when you're winning even if it's only by a couple goals to not come out and be a little bit complacent right mm -hmm. but that's why i always say i'd rather go into halftime down by a couple than up by a couple because you know uh uh, uh clearwater here has, has proved it for me they come out they got nothing to lose they're already down so they take some chances boom boom next thing you know I don't think anybody was expecting him to score six goals straight or seven goals straight, but still. Here we go. It's going to be picked up now by Ujoa going together there with Gringo. Wins the ride off. Gringo, near side back shot to the center. Brito will come in and pick up the play. Now. Well, again, they they allowed five goals against versus Dudacorp, eight goals against versus Tamara. So they've already yeah. allowed four more than their most in this game against Clearwater. Here comes the shot back down. Picked up here by Ujoa. Knocks it down. Criado stays right there. Keeping the pressure on Ujoa. Decides to run back to left. Oh, got away from him a little bit. He gets it back to it right here as Britos now is able to come in and help out. Hold the man. Now, Bignoli goes up to be a target here for Ujoa. He gets hit by Obregon. Churi trying to keep this one alive right here. Ujoa able to win the ride off. You asked for beast mode and beast mode has now been activated right here. Look at this. Here he goes. The Ujoa, he is in the zone. He just beat all four players in white jerseys and still lets it roll on through. What a goal. Alario Ujoa, you can never count him out. Just like Fran Elizalde, you cannot count Ujoa out. Doesn't matter by how many he is down. He will find a way to claw back into the game. I believe that's that make a big bay. Make a big bay, yep. I think you're right. It sure looks like it. Oh, great speed and acceleration here. Hilario, back-to-back -back goals. You got that beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, chestnut mare there. Insane burst of acceleration there. That's how you can spot her easily. It's just the acceleration, right? Just the um, explosion. Well done, Cherry. Holds the mallet. And now it's picked up here by Chip Campbell. Chip up. Now, Lucas, well done. Quick slap back shot there for Gringo to come in and pick up the play. Gringo moves back into the man. Well done. Here by Marcos Alberti. Uh, Marcos Bignoli. Bignoli now going to be challenged by Gringo. Oh, man, he got stuck by his own man. Able to jump back on it right here, though. Colombres takes off with it. Now, Colombres keeps it alive. Fires back up there looking for Churi. Can he get to it? Oh, that's, uh, not on this field. There's no way. This field is so fast that when that ball gets hit like that and it's rolling wide, it's going to continue to roll wide. What a good-looking mare. Ujoa's like, here, take a look at this mare right now while I readjust my glove. <laughs>
takes off. Oh, we're going. Ooh. Jury just frappes Ujoa again for the second time today. And now, well done there as it's going to be Britos read that one perfectly. He'll leave it now for Ujoa. He takes off running right here. Ujoa is going to give and go right back up to Juan Britos. Here comes Gringo with an open back shot. Picked up by Marcos Bignoli. Chip Campbell goes to the back shot there. Don't think he connected as well as he'd like. It's going to be taken now by Bignoli. Back at the goal. Looking good in front. Marcos right there. Near side. Open back shot. He doesn't connect. Oh, tough break for Marquitos Bignoli. And a bit of a nice break here for Clearwater. Third knock-in coming up for them in this chucker. Well, see this one more oh. time. That ball just bouncing on Bignoli. Can't get the back shot off. Had a little bit of a backspin on it. Kept it away from him. The Professor brings the ball back into play. Professor to the left. Hits it too straight, though. As Ujoa is going to be able to win the ride off and turn the ball right back around. Yeah, he hit that one way too straight. And now it's going to be Ujoa. Working it back, going to try to make him pay for the broken knock-in right here. Goes back to the right again. He's going to be challenged there by Cole Lombre. He lays a huge bump on him, but, but Ojoa is able to keep control of the ball. Takes it forward, keeps it just behind. Lucas Criado now picked up here by Marcos Bignoli, and then it's Brit. No way! Wow! Unbelievable! It goes wide, and that is going to end Chucker number five. Clearwater clinging to a three-goal lead right now. Well, let's take a look at this quickly before the break. What a Kobe stop watched. right here. Britos comes off the horse's hawk and over the back line wide. Talk about luck of the Irish right there for Clearwater. All right, we'll be back after this break here on the USBA Polo Network. Equine Clinic, we know your horse is not only a superior athlete, but a part of your family. With more than 30 veterinarians, four board certified surgeons, and the most technologically advanced equine imaging suite in the country, our team has all the skill sets required for accurate diagnosis and successful treatment. Palm Beach Equine Clinic is committed to providing exceptional service and care for both patients and owners. Visit equineclinic.com today to make us a part of your team. All in line and ready for the start. There is a moment in every horse race when expectation spins into realization. Oh, way to go to a perfect start. But no one's going to catch your horse. Unbelievable. And they're into the stretch. And you probably also thought to yourself, wouldn't it be even yeah, better if I could morning. truly call that racehorse my own? Wicked Strong wins it going away. Well, oh, why couldn't you? Welcome back, everyone, to the USP Apollo Network. Getting ready to start chucker number six. Wow, we already had people uh, uh, saying OT coming up earlier, but let's see. We're about to have this knock in here. When we get a break, maybe on our next whistle. Well, it's a three-goal game, so I don't. I'm not under. under yeah, the gun no, here. you know, you're not obligated to give a, an OT prediction right I now. I would love overtime from a neutral standpoint. Me too. At the same time, I'm sure all the Clearwater faithful are. Hoping they finish the job right here. Yeah, get it done six. here in regulation. Look at this. What a shot back down. And here goes Chip Campbell. But, man, Andre's on a racehorse. He's able to get up there. Campbell sends it forward. Back to the left. Priado looks like he's coming back on that uh, mare that he started off on. Uh, uh, Sarah, Lack Sarah. 
and now it's going to be picked up here, turning back the ball. Britos with control of the play. He's got Ujoa breaking to the right. He's going to hit him on the right right now. Coming in, Ujoa and Gringo will come together. Gringo there to put Ujoa in the pocket. Ujoa perfectly times that one and gets away from Colombres. Look at this. What a horse. Now he checks down as the ball gets settled against the board. Tries to dig it off. Can't do so. Gringo jumps on it, drags it forward right here. Ujoa is going to get away from What a play. Ujoa beautifully done there. And look at Marcos Bignoli trying to keep Gringo away from them. Oh, look at this. No way. What a play. Gringo. What? Ujoa takes the man. Oh, man, that is amazing right there. That is an, an unbelievable team polo right there. Alario Ujoa, he wins the play, steals it away from Gringo. He's got Bignoli taking the man for him. He sees Bignoli letting the man get away from him, so he takes the man, leaves the ball for Bignoli, and at that point, Marcos has to make this goal. If the 10-goaler takes the man for you, you better make it. It doesn't matter how you do it. <laughs> Near side back shot's just fine. But you love to see, you know, the IQ from Hilario. And the also, unselfish polo. He believes in his teammate there. He's just going to make the right play instead of thinking, you know, what, I'm the 10 goaler. I need to find no, a no, way no, to play no, this No, I think you made, the, you made the, uh, a great point there. He believes his teammate can make that play. And I'm going to tell you, from being in that spot in the, uh, you know, earlier in my career, look at this. Oh, what a goal. Um, when, you're, when, the, when your 10-goal player believes that you can make the play, you have to make it. It gives you confidence in yourself. Whether you think you can do it or not, you just do it because you have to. Well, what a quick answer. I was about to say Park Place now putting a little pressure on the shoulders of Clearwater, but right out of the throw in Criado. Atop Black Sarah gets a you. nice bounce and then just fires it at the goal through the window. Back to a three game. Wow. This is awesome. What a game this turned out to be. Back shot here and again and picked up now by Boradine, and it's going to be Wano on the ball. He lost his stirrup. Well, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of other teams here cheering for Clearwater to kind of sh oh, yeah. shuffle up the standings here. Absolutely. You love to see, uh, like you said before, hey, we're Americans here. We, you, you know, you're North American, I guess, Canadian. We love an underdog. And here comes the pickup now by Britos. Digs it out from under the horse. Takes off. Looking to send it over to the center for Ujoa, who's got a step on his man right here. Chewy trying to get to him. Now Ujoa back to the inside of Gringo Colombres. He's got to wait. Now it's going to be picked up by Wano. Gets his clock cleaned right there. Up on the handlebars. What a back shot. And it's wide. Wow. What a play. Well, some sort of appeal here from the Park Place teams. You can see Bart Is the whistle there. happened yet or not? Hilario was. Yeah, there's a whistle now. Indicating something. Let's take another look. Did they think. Britos on the handlebars. Oh, oh yeah. it God. comes off of Britos' horse's hoof. So it's a knock-in, not a safety. That would have been a safety otherwise. Bignoli off his horse, taking his, spo his spoilers off right now. Great opportunity, again, immediately after the Clearwater goal. And Ooh, up on the handlebars there. Oh, he had no choice there. He was trying to stay on the horse. Uh, well, while they're talking it out right here, they're checking for a possible safety. I don't think it's a safety because it looked it's it's a it's a right. off of Brito. Brito's if horse kicking over if the it back had line. Been backed and then off of a Clearwater horse. Right. Then, yeah, then but there that's not the case. Safety. Yeah. Uh, while we're waiting for this one to get knocked in uh, or brought back into play here, I want to say uh, I want to wish a, a safe trip travels to my mom and dad. They're on their way to Argentina right now. They left shortly before uh, this game started. And so I hope they have a, a safe trip. They're flying up. They're watching the game as they can right now in the airport and then on the airplane. But, yeah, hope mom and dad have a safe, fun trip down to Argentina. And here comes Gringo to pick up the play and keep this one alive right here. Colombres takes off with it. Pass midfield, turning it into a positive knock-in. Now Colombres with Marcos on his hip. Bignoli tries to get there. Gringo now picked up by Ujoa and then Britos. And it's going to be taken right here by... Lucas, and then Gringo fires at the goal. Look at this shot from Colo. Oh, it's off. I thought it was going right down the middle there because I was following Cherry. All right. 340 left. We need about a goal a minute here from Park Place. And we just we saw Clearwater do it in the fourth. We know Park Place can too. Here we go. They're changing it up here. Ujo is going to go for it here as Cherry comes in there for the bump. What a play. Now, oh, man. What a nice job, job there by Cherry. Taken now by. Juan Britos, he's got Ujoa behind him. He's like, Ujoa, you want this one? Go ahead. You can have it, buddy. How about now? Nope, I'll keep it. He's going to go ahead and take off with it right here. Now, Britos. 
He's got Bignoli there holding out the man. Now Britos drops it back, tries to drop it back to Ujo. Ujo jumps back on it right here, takes off with that ball. Now Marcos Bignoli coming in. It's going to be Gringo to take it forward, flip it over to his offside, and burn up valuable time as now Gringo, or excuse me, Ujo will turn the ball back around to the left, send it at the goal. Oh, Wano's going to get there. He kept it in play. Taken now by Campbell. Well done, Chip Campbell. 2.45 on the clock. It is time is really starting to work against Ujo, uh, Park Place at this point. Now, he shuts it down. Ujoa breaks back now, gets away from the first man. Ujoa, now Churi staying right there on him, pointing at the ball and the whistle. Churi saying, no, no, no. I gave him a place to, to go. I, think, I don't when, think... Yeah, I think if, when we see a replay of this... I don't think he did really get, have, uh, you know, you got the umpires right behind him. Okay, well, actually, for right there, but then there. Yeah, you could see when he, he you know, he comes in and. Mm. That's a fine line right there. But it looks like it's going to be a penalty, too, to go in favor of Park Place here. Still a two-goal ball game, even if they put this one on through. It was a little while ago, but that's a... Real quick, let's take a look at our... Uh, well, yeah, I think the big Noli goal was probably the goal of the game. Was it Joe when he took the man earlier in, the, in this chucker? Well, let's take a look. He's, there it is. Look at this. What a go. play by, Green, by uh, Ujoa. Asking you shall receive, yep. Toby. Well done, guys. Yeah, we did previously have a Gringo Columbre's goal queued up. It was a fantastic goal, yeah. if you guys remember that one earlier but this on. One, hey, this goes to show how good our guys are here for the live stream because, like Cody was saying, we had a different goal queued up for goal of the game. This one happened a, a minute or so ago, and they're able to get it back and show it to us for the goal of the game. So, well done, guys. Beautiful job. Okay. And you just asked for it. And just, just literally know. just asked for it. You're right. Well, back on Mega Big Bay yep. one more time. For, what, the third Crunch or fourth time, time now? And when he two. needs to score, kind of like Magnifica used to be. Look at this. Umpire puts the ball back into play. Back to a two-goal ball game here. And now it's going to be Britos to win the throw-in. Takes it forward right there. Now Britos back around to the outside. One, just under two minutes left to go. Gringo comes in, lays a bump on him. Ujoa now picks up the ball as Britos stays with Columbres. And that means, and look at... Lucas is still what on Sarah. Shot. Lock Sarah. Look at this. Andre Boradin. Can he get there? Boradin. It's going to be Campbell with a near side open back shot. Good shot there from Campbell. What a pickup here by Britos. They are running short on time. They really need to score right now if they want to have a chance to send it into OT or win in regulation. Britos gets out of there with it. Keeps it calm and collected right here. Turns it back around to the inside. What a play by Juan Britos. Gringo right there. They leave it for Ujoa as Marcos takes the man. And now it'll be Ujoa to send it at the goal. Oh, man, that might cost him right there. That could be game. Well, I don't want to call it too soon, but woof. Just about. Going to take take as much time as you can here, Gringo. Here. They're going to need some, he like, some help from the whistles, a foul here, something with a minute left, two goals. It's going to be very tough, but. Unless they can, can unless they can break this knock in right here. Nope, not this time, Gringo. Man, it's looking like uh, Clearwater is going to take the win over Park Place right here. Look at this. Sends it down right there. What a back shot from Britos. Picked off by Ujoa. Back shot right here for Andre. Ujoa gives the ball back to Andre, or tried to anyway. And it's going to be Lucas Criado Jr. burning off the time right here. Criado Jr. takes it into the corner right there. Now he'll hit his back shot. Uh-oh. Well done right here, Ujoa. Now if they score, it's game over. They've won this game. Uh-oh. Oh, man, there is some Britos going for it here. He'll put it on through, and that'll end the game. Final score, 13-12. Clearwater takes home the win over Park Place. I cannot believe it. Unbelievable game right here. Crazy game, Toby, as you said. And we and we had something happen there with Ujoa, and yeah, he, I, I think he was may it have, overgone? He may have taken a hook, something to the hand. The umpire is discussing. I think it's matches over. I think so too. Right there. Oh, can you go back a little bit further than that, guys? Couldn't I mean, quite see it develop. Yeah, the only possibility Park Place had was if they were able to somehow draw a penalty one late there to keep you're right keep the clock alive. But hands are being shook officially here. 
Clearwater can celebrate their first win of the U.S. Open. Not only that, if Park Place again had won today, they would have been into the semifinals. So I'm sure there's a lot of other teams. This is a huge, huge wrinkle for that them. That are very happy that Park Place, there's still an extra slot open in the semis. Let's just put it that That's way. That's a good way to put Park it. Park Place has to play at Ladolfina in their final game of group play. So and they're going to have to play perfect. Yep. Yeah, Valiente. Look at Gringo. Yeah, him and Chip are so excited right here. I told you, Chip. I told yeah. you we were Yeah, we right. Do it. <laughs> exactly. Come on, Chip. See, I told you. You got to believe me, man. <laughs> but, but just like I said, Valiente, the only team now with a spot in the semis. So there's, you know, this tournament wide open. This what a, a fill in, huh? Churi. Over going. What a he game played, he I played mean, today. Jared, incredible horses, of course, but. Yeah, Geronimo played them incredibly well, and yeah, he had a huge impact for sure. He did. I'm sorry. All right, for Cody Offen, I'm Toby Wayman. Thanks so much for tuning in to the USPA Polo Network. We'll see you at our next U.S. Open live stream.